The Quiet Storm is still, to this day, one of my favorite points of the radio. Because there's a couple of things that happened and The Quiet Storm. So for all of your radio stations, like particularly if you played like contemporary R&B and hip hop, The Quiet Storm was the point where you could have crossover, right? Where it was, you got older stuff too Mm -hmm. so it was an opportunity where if all day you're hearing like contemporary r&b and hip-hop where you know nine o'clock you know what i'm saying nine or ten o'clock somebody's about to come on the radio and you're about to get stuff from the past eras so Mm -hmm. i got uh introduced the quiet storm for me oh my god wow that (laughs) i remember when i was 11, 12, 13, because I had a radio in my... There's a lot of music in my house. I had a radio, a stereo in my room. Mm -hmm. And I would go to sleep to the quiet storm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would put it on and put it on really low. So I literally went to sleep hearing the Isley Brothers and hearing the Temptations and hearing who uh, a troop all in th- at the yeah. same time, right? So I could hear stuff that was on Troop's Attitude, you know what I'm saying, in 1990 and 91, and also hear stuff from the 70s and the 60s. So it was like, it's an important crossover moment where we get introduced to other areas of Black music. And I think that format, even today, even the DJs all sound the same. No matter where you are in the country, your Quiet Storm DJ has a sound. <laughs> they have to sound like, um, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Quiet Storm. This is your DJ, DJ Sir Daniel. I'm going to take you on a romantic trip throughout the atmosphere. And uh, I hope you have your candles lit and your glass of wine poured. So sit back, relax, and listen to the Quiet Storm. And then, <laughs> hold on, and then you like, Leo, <laughs> Leo, <laughs> cancer. <laughs> you know, but, but you, you can't help but love that. You know, there's a place for that in, in our community. We made space for that in our community because we had to make space for, for love. You know, we made space for connecting and made space for, um, affection which is why which is why i believe events like slow drag is so popular because to your earlier point people want to connect and i think even after this pandemic people want to connect even more even if it means like slow jamming on the dance floor you might even just two-step with the person you may not even touch them but you want to just be in the same room on the same wavelength with somebody just for a few minutes um, in the right atmosphere. But before we, I, I wanted to check in with you on something. Do you recall the first like love song or ballad that you became really cognizant of and even started singing along to? Because I remember mine. While you're thinking about that, I'll tell y'all, mine was New Editions, Is This The End? Great choice. It was- and it was so, and I, I imagine seven-year-old me, like, singing along at the top of my lungs, you know, like, I've been, um, you know, I've experienced all this heartbreak, but for whatever reason, it resonated with me because maybe it was because their voices were young enough to where I can could, I could identify with the, the tone voices, but then the sentiment of the record struck me. It was, uh, you know, at an early age, I was like, is this the end? And, you know, you can feel like, wow, this is really sad. Something's ending and something is hurting this person. And I had an empathetic reaction with this song. And that's what made me connect with that song. Wow. Um, That is a really good question. Uh, I think, I, I think actually the first slow song that is omnipresent in my life is uh, The Temptations, My Girl. And I think because my dad was such a huge Temptations fan, like I feel like it was just always in my ear. Um, And so that idea of connection, that idea of singing this sentiment um, 
and having to slow dance to this song is probably the the first song that I remember kind of connecting to and could sing. I mean, who can't start? Yeah. I've got sunshine on a cloudy day. Like, it's just great lyrics. So there's songs that you can sing. But you know, Sir Daniel, so you said something, and I know we talked about this before we got on, but I think this is a good place for it. I People absolutely want to connect. They want to feel some way to be intimate with other people that isn't sexual, right? And I realized, y'all, so for those of y'all that are listening, I realized that as an adult, as a gay man, I have never slow dragged with another dude. And that's weird to me. Like, that's weird to me. But I also recognize that we are in a moment where I was kind of coming of age where music was changing and there wasn't like, like there wasn't like red light parties or blue light parties. There wasn't like a place where you can put that in the club. And which is another reason why I'm so happy that slow drag is doing what they are doing, because I think it's reigniting this idea that, this is something that people need too. And I'm wondering how we can spread the word that we should slow drag more. <laughs> <laughs>